Mobile applications have been taking center stage in developers' minds across the country, especially with last year's introduction of the iPhone App Store, and some application developers taking home pretty big paychecks from their meager applications. Are mobile applications the future? And as one panelist on a, in a San Francisco panel put it, are they bigger than the internet? Let's bring in a couple of technology journalists and see what's up. We bring in Paul Miller from Engadget. Paul, thanks for being with us. Hey, thanks for having me. Also, we bring in Mark Spoonar from Laptop Mag. Mark, thanks for being with us as well. Oh, thanks, Randall. So this panel was a panel in San Francisco. It was re-reported on the BBC. And the headline there was simply, mobile applications bigger than the internet, question mark. So, you know, what's your take, Paul? Do you think that, you know, mobile, I guess in their context, they're saying developers are going to see these things as really big. Do you think mobile applications are really a, a big deal or are they a little bit overhyped? I, it, it's hard to say. I, it's, a, it's kind of hard to o overhype mobile applications right now just because, you know, it's obvious that it, that's a huge revenue stream right now and, and people are getting a lot more functionality out of their phones than they ever have before. So it's exciting and it's, it's a really cool thing. But to call anything bigger than the Internet <laughs> is a little weird, especially because, you know, the Internet really isn't... Um, if you could maybe say mobile applications are bigger than Internet applications... You know that might be yeah. uh, uh, at least arguable, but internet is is a delivery mechanism for data, and that most mobile apps are reliant on uh, for their updates and for their live information and and obviously their delivery. Yeah, I mean, I think that I think that headline was just kind of you know out there to kind of make people take second notice. Mark, what's your take? Do you think that you know obviously we're both no one really thinks that these mobile applications are going to you know, communicate with people and change our lives the way that the web and the internet have. What's your take, though, on the future of mobile apps? Do you think that they're, you know, something to be as excited as these mobile app developers are? Well, I think there's reason to be excited, and I think there's a reason why, you know, the piece is sort of trying to say that, you know, to Paul's point, that apps are becoming more important than web-based apps, not necessarily that apps are becoming more important than the internet. But I think there's a reason why Apple moved away from the web as a development platform, whether it was of their own devices or because they were listening to the community. And, and that puts, you know, application platforms like the WebOS that Palm has in sort of a difficult position where they're playing catch up. You know, and I think when you look at applications like, you know, something like Let's Golf, which I've been playing with on the side, and you see like the realistic and the rich graphics that that has, yeah. you know, there's no way that something like that today could run over the web. So long term, I think, you know, the web is going to be really important when it comes to apps. But short term, you know, the native applications are winning and winning big. So let's talk about the future of apps for a second. Paul, now, if you had your crystal ball out and you, you know, you've seen the iPhone app store over the last year, we've seen, you know, maybe demos and research labs across the country and around the world. What do you think the future of mobile applications are? What makes you excited about the future of mobile applications specifically? I, I, what makes me excited about the future of mobile applications is the present of mobile applications. There are, you know, I have a, on my iPhone, I have a guitar tuner. <laughs> uh, which has tons of chord charts. It, it, I can select multiple tunings for my car. Um, on a flight back um, from vacation uh, last week, I was um, playing Mist, the full version of Mist, on my phone. They're really good. The future of application uh, is not um, the mobile applications. Isn't beer drinking applications? It's, <laughs> you know, the gimmicky ones. They're going to sell for now, and they're going to you know make people money, but they're eventually going to get drowned out by really useful applications. Well, Paul, do you th it sounds like you're kind of, you know, in this state of excitement. Yeah. You find these guitar tuner apps. Do you think we're kind of in this golden age of applications, except for, of course, those fart applications and beer drinking and all that lame application development? I don't know if I'd call it a golden age. It's more like a wild west. There's some really exciting, cool things that happen, and there's a lot of, there's a lot of crap. Yeah. Uh, you know, hopefully, I think, it, like all platforms, it'll mature. And, um, you know, right now, uh, a good web app can give, you know, a mobile app a run for its money in, in some in some departments, uh, which is what Google's really banking on, especially on the desktop side. So, you know, it's going to be kind of a fun give and take and, and seeing which one can progress the fastest and be more useful, but I think... They're both going to coexist, and they're both great for users. Yeah, I think a lot of times people want to, you know, when they have these panels especially, they want to pit this as, you know, it's either web apps or mobile apps, and it can't be 
both for some reason. But of course it can be both. They're different platforms. I don't know, Mark, what's your take? What do you think, the f what, what excites you about the future of mobile development? Well, I think what excites me is, is the fact that there's so many great applications out there and that, that BBC article was going into just how hard it is to find something that's great for you. I mean, I think, you know, this, the one hit wonder syndrome is definitely prevalent. You know, what I think is needed is not necessarily better apps, but I'm really more excited about the app stores themselves getting better and becoming more in tune with your needs. So we need something like the Amazon store that knows what you bought the last times and, and can not only recommend updates for what you already have, but sort of make recommendations based upon what you've purchased before or gotten for free before. And also, you know, I'd like to see the top 10 list evolve. You know, why can't it look more like YouTube where it's not only like what's hot now, but what's hot, you know, of, you know, of all time or this week or this month. Yeah. So I'd like to see the discoverability of apps improve, but I really feel like the apps themselves are on the right track. That's awesome. Well, guys, thanks so much for being on the show. We're out of time. Paul Miller from Engadget, thanks for being with us. Also, Mark Spunar from Laptop Mag, thanks for being with us as well. I'm Randall Bennett. That is it for this show. We're actually on the mobile web, m.techv.com, if you want to check us out there. We don't have a mobile app yet, but we'll see if we can uh, get on that soon. And uh, that, that is it for this show. We'll see you next time. Later.